today on Nerd Out, Smart Transactions. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about smart transactions. Uh, smart transactions are just a thought experiment I've been working on very, very infrequently, but there was some stuff on Twitter that came up in the last week or so from various community members, so I want to talk about my idea for solving the concurrency problem on Cardano. So a little bit of background, um, you know, what is the concurrency problem? The idea that if you have a UTXO sitting out there, it can only be spent by one other transaction. So if multiple people want to spin that, one of the transactions will succeed and the other will fail. And the idea is that some of these protocols out there, particularly things that swap or do DEX or have a lot of concurrent users, they want to support all of those users at the same time. And based on the need of the protocol, they need to consolidate tokens or funds into one or very few UTXOs. You can't just have a protocol or a smart contract look at 2,000 different UTXOs that are out there to figure out what is the current state and then grab some of those to complete a swap, whatever, and not have contention with other users who may grab the same one or You'll, you'll constantly be in the state of having to rebuild your transaction because somebody else will cause it to fail. So that is the, uh, the issue right now. And so only one transaction can spin this UTXO at a time. And on other, other chains, um, you can do chaining or in account-based models, it doesn't really matter because there's a global state. So if you did have transaction chaining, like if somebody did a swap and my transaction could nicely chain onto the outputs of theirs, uh, then that would be something that could solve the issue. Um, so transactions are currently very deterministic. They're brittle at creation time. Anybody else can come in, spend a UTXO, any UTXO in my transaction before me making it invalid. And so transactions specify exactly what to do and they can't really contain the user's intent, like what action they wanted to take, uh, regardless of picking what UTXOs. So a potential solution I've come up with for this, is I call smart transactions. And this allows a transaction to specify its intent instead of exactly which UTXOs it will consume. And so the idea is that the Cardano block producer instead of just checking the UTXOs, making sure they're not spent, okay, that transaction can go into a block, it has to become a little smarter. And so it has to say, okay, with these input UTXOs, you know, here's the ones that are hard-coded, oh, and here's one that's an intent UTXO, do I find a matching UTXO that I could use on the blockchain currently that I could then make this transaction valid? Uh, the Cardano CLI already does similar things when calculating a UTXO that goes to the change address field. So you can specify, you know, Cardano CLI transaction build, and you specify a change address. Well, it will calculate automatically when you're building it how much change goes to that UTXO, how much goes to the fee, and any, any change values that need to go into that UTXO. So it already kind of does some things like what I'm going to ask it to do. Um, also, this does add some additional work to a block producer node. So if anybody decides to implement something like this, they will need to figure out what the fees for this thing should be so that they're adjusted accordingly for tra transactions that utilize this intent type of uh, UTXO input. And finally, uh, another issue that'll have to be overcome is the UTXO set would need to be indexed by address instead of just by hash and index. So currently, a node only really knows about hashes and indexes. If you say, give me all the UTXOs on a given address, it has to search everything um, in order to match, uh, in order to find things on that address. 
it's not indexed by address and can quickly get those UTXOs. So it would have to change so it'd be a little faster. So here's the concept or what I'm kind of proposing. So uh, at the top here, this first input UTXO, this is the current style, I call it the old style of input UTXO where you just specify, um, sorry, where you specify the hash value and the index value. So it, it just, this is the exact UTXO I wanna spend. If somebody happens to spin this one before me, boom, my transaction falls out of the mempool and it just silently fails. So what I've suggested is just like we recently changed the output UTXOs from an array to a map, I'm suggesting we change the input UTXOs from an array to a map. And now at the map index zero, we specify the hash. At index one, we specify the index. What that allows us to do is we can now use a new map index of two for this wildcard UTXO that can specify an intent. And so now what I'm saying is instead of looking for a hash and in an index, match any single UTXO on a given address. And so I'm specifying an address as the input here. And then I'm specifying some very simple matching criteria. Now this is not exhaustive. Maybe it's not even a good idea. It's just something I want I put in here to explain the concept. So here, this would match any UTXO on the address that is less than or equal to 151 ADA. And so it'll look for any UTXO that matches this, plus it has to have um, a particular token that is this token policy, this token name. It has to be greater than or equal to the amount and I'm saying it has to have this address needs to have more than 810 of these tokens or more. And then I also specified another example of this other token type it must not have any of these. So you could specify an intent that would really lock it down so that it's only possible for your protocol to pick one possible UTXO and then also on the output side, you're going to need the ability for multiple change addresses. And so I've specified on the output side this new value four, which tells you, okay, this address should be the change output for the input UTXOs zero and one, and this, this other one, it should calculate the change for that UTXO index two. So if we go back here to all these input UTXOs, any change that comes from this one goes into one address, any change, or these first two goes into one address, anything that comes from my wildcard UTXO that ends up not being spent uh, will then go into this other change address. So you can quickly build up a nice complicated intent of what you're trying to do here in the UTXO set. And then finally in the bottom section outside of the main uh, transaction body because this is this will change before it goes on chain so we here you see we have index zero these are all our signatures um, here we have looks like a multi-sig script for all of these two addresses um, and then we need i i added a seven um, and an eight for resolve input UTXOs. And so here is the input UTXO it chose to replace that first wildcard UTXO. So there would be a check and then the node would pick it and then add it to this section of the transaction. And then for the change UTXOs, it would be indexed by you know the ones needing their sections replaced by, okay, what is the actual change going to the given UTXO? So it, it kind of does all that for you. And so what does this do for us? Or how does this improve things? Uh, first of all, this is just a thought experiment. Obviously, it's not a full product requirements document. I'm sure there's things I haven't thought of or gotchas, whatever. It does need some additional study to ensure there wouldn't it be any trade-offs or that the trade-offs are worth it. 
Uh, it could be abused if you specified on your protocol a wildcard UTXO that wasn't tight enough. Uh, then maybe it's possible for somebody to inject a UTXO that could then mess up your protocol. Uh, but the idea is when you're building a protocol, you want to make sure it's, it's pretty bulletproof. So you would specify an input UTXO that maybe also had to contain this exact special unique token that only you could create or something like that. And with this, the, the concept of batchers can just go away. So the Cardano node then becomes the universal batchers. And as people interact with the protocol, it's evaluating each transaction, filling in the UTXO. So if somebody gets in in front of me, no big deal. My transaction with its intent will just spin the outputs of the previous guy who got his transaction in the mempool first. Um, and because of this, protocols can now become composable. When you have batchers, that breaks the composability because you have to do two transactions for every transaction. So like, for example, if I'm out there and I want to go to a DEX and I want to do a token swap, well, first I have to put a transaction that puts a marker on the chain that says, I want to swap token A for token B. Then a batcher has to come along later, gather up everybody who wants to interact with that A, B pool, put them all together, and then... Uh, execute all of those in a batch. Uh, the other thing about this particular proposal is it obviously does require a hard fork. I'm making significant changes to the transaction layout, um, also to how the mempool works. Um, you know, there's there's a number of big changes. The mempool is now has to do a whole lot more calculations and things have to be indexed differently. In other words, it's a big change that requires a hard fork. Uh, the idea is that Cardano can still mostly remain deterministic as long as a transaction intent is specified with tight enough cr criteria. So using this method, people building protocols would still have to have, just like they have to evaluate their smart contracts to make sure they can't be exploited, you would have to make sure that any transaction you are building for the protocol has very tight criteria. So really, when you're specifying an intent, there's really only one, maybe two potential um, UTXOs that it can grab from. I think that would be kind of a good way of designing things. And then finally, transactions can then naturally chain themselves from many different users interacting with a protocol all at once. Um, anyway, if you like this, if you don't like this, comment down below, comment on Twitter. I'd like to have a discussion around this. Um, I know a lot of people have already been talking about ways to improve Cardano and the developer experience on Cardano. This is just some thoughts from me. So with that, thank you and nerd out.